Welcome to Behind the Muscle Podcast. Today's guest is a newly crowned IFBB Pro. Today's guest is Ryan Foster. Ryan, welcome back to the podcast, man. Thanks for having me, Quentin. Yeah, for sure, dude. So um, like I always say, this is always uh, an enjoyable aspect of the podcast for me. I get to have athletes on uh, before they compete. And then a lot of you guys I get to bring back on um, after you get your pro card. So um, I'm really looking forward to kind of catching up, Ryan, talking about this prep and uh, nationals a little bit. So why don't you kind of refresh us a little bit? Uh, um, at what point, how many weeks out did you guys start prep and how did kind of prep go for you overall? Yeah, well, we started at 16 weeks out. Um, I mean, I was counting, so, you know, since I was like 30 weeks out, I was already kind of dialing things in a little bit more and more. And uh, 16 weeks is when we really like set everything in place and started cleaning things up. Um, everything went very, very smooth those first couple of, well, those first few weeks up until about, I think I was 12 weeks out when I had had to make a move um, back to Oregon from Arizona. And that kind of took a toll, um, kind of put me back. But uh, I was able to recover from that and we're keeping pretty good pace. And then those hiccups came about around seven or eight weeks out. And I literally had those for about three to three and a half weeks straight. Um, at the same time, I, I couldn't keep half of my meals down. So between like weeks, I don't know, six and three, I was throwing up at least two or three of my meals or had really bad indigestion or hiccups or something was going, going wrong. So we had to pull back on a lot of the drugs, uh, which made it a lot harder for me to get in the kind of conditioning that I needed to. So that's that's kind of where I'm at, like, you know, reflecting back on the look that we brought. Um, you know, it's not an excuse, but there is the fact that I, I was able to get as hard as I did without any of those really good compounds. You know, um, I think there's going to be ways around it in the future, but um, a lot of that's just some underlying health stuff that I had put off. And I was like, you know what, I'm just going to plow through. I'm this close. Um, I, I feel like this is my time. You know, we talked about it. I told you I wanted to be in the overall and, uh, but honestly, just getting there and, you know, being called IFBB pro was, um, I'm really proud of that. So, yeah. Now I know we talked about the hiccup thing, uh, I think on our pre nationals conversation, but not everybody that's going to watch or listen to this episode, Ryan's probably going to go back and listen to that or watch that or did. So uh, just refresh us or, or, or let us know those of us that didn't hear the other episode with you. What was the hiccup thing? What, what did you kind of find out? Like what, like walk us through that just a little bit more because I've heard other uh, top level bodybuilders talk about getting hiccups. And I've, I've, I mean, I know what having hiccups is, but this is like constant. So can you try to, in your own words, like tell us like what you were experiencing, please. <laughs> Dude, it's hard to put into words, but I'll, I'll give it my best. Um, and when I say hiccups, it's a literal hiccup, not like a hiccup in the plan. Like these are like, you know, my whole body convulsing and it would be like sometimes four or five of those hiccups back to back to where I couldn't even catch my breath. So they're not natural hiccups. They're like super physiological Um I tried, you know, reaching out. I had talked to my coach and we were like looking up and down everywhere we could to try and find a solution. Um, and, you know, I tried muscle relaxers because I thought maybe it was a nerve or spasm thing or whatever. And those didn't do anything, but just make me super, super tired. And I could barely carry my body around. Um, got on some Prilosec because I thought that might help with the stomach acid. I was taking Tums, uh, digestive enzymes, you know, being really, really careful with my sweeteners and things like that. You know, I didn't have any diet sodas this whole prep. And none of that really seemed to work until we did pull the trend out, which was only 150 milligrams. 
which is like nothing. But we pulled that out and it took a few weeks and it, they, they slowed down a little bit. Um, so we kept that out and we couldn't really use much else. That's nothing can really replace that, you know, it's kind of the holy grail of prep compounds. Um, but luckily we do have, um, I've got a guest posing in July. So I'm going to run a mini prep kind of for that and run some experiments and see, you know, after I go to the doctor, if there's something we can fix there, maybe it's compound related. I'll have a little bit of time before, um, I get back on stage for real. No, but yeah, um, the hiccups, I, I reached out. I think uh, Andrew Barry, you had him on here. And I remember him saying, so I heard that podcast. So I reached out to him and he had me try a few things. And, uh, you know, so nothing still remedied it. So that's something I still have to get figured out. I had hiccups last night again for the last actual couple of days for several hours on end is pretty miserable <laughs> now uh be before we hit record you said that the hiccups kind of subsided for a while after you pulled out the trend and then uh the the uh peak week did they did they come back is that what i kind of understood when we were uh chatting before we hit record so i only really had them when i got really tired so like towards the end of the day, if I was working, so luckily I had that last week of work, I took it off. But with traveling, you know, and getting tired from that really long flight from Oregon to Florida, um, kind of stressed out my body. So I had them on and off, but it was only short bouts of it. I did have them the night before the show for just a couple hours, but it wasn't, it wasn't near like it was like that six to three week out mark. Hmm. So, sounds like hell, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. But, you know, everybody goes through their own kind of struggles and prep. And, I, you know, there's somebody's might be mental. Somebody's might be physical. But, um, yeah, it's definitely not an excuse. And I didn't want to really emphasize that on, you know, blaming my conditioning on that. But I know I can be better. I think that's the main thing is I'm just like. I'm really bummed out. Like I'm happy I turned pro and everything, but I'm just bummed out that I couldn't bring my best because I know I could have brought something that was worthy of, you know, a better place than that. Right, right. for sure. Okay, so, so let's uh, let's soon. let's let's talk a little bit about uh, how much cardio uh, did you get up to uh, in your uh, prep leading into nationals? Um, just touch on that for a quick minute, Ryan, please. Okay, so towards the end there, it was pretty much 35 minutes steady state twice a day um, on training days and then 45 minutes twice a day on my rest days. And that was, I just did the treadmill and incline, pretty low impact. Cool. All right, that's not too bad then. Um, all right, so... Uh, you said you, f you flew from Oregon to, to Florida. How, how long of a flight uh, is that? Was it a straight flight? Did you have layovers? What was that like? Yeah, I was lucky enough to get on a straight shot over there. Um, and that was six hours. Okay. Okay. So not terrible, but, you know, um, still does some stuff to your body. So you got to get a little water off when you get there. Yeah. It's hard to gauge, you know. Mm-hmm. For sure, man. So uh, what day did you guys get to Orlando? And then wa why don't you walk us a little bit through uh, peak week, Ryan? Okay. So uh, I flew in Wednesday. I got there Wednesday evening. Um, got checked in the room and everything. It actually ended up being pretty late at night by the time we got there. And there's the time difference, too, is three hours later there. Um, so that was take that took some adjusting. Um, pretty much just ate my normal food, my low, my low days all the way up until Thursday. We started with another um, regular day, which was just 200 grams of rice, pretty much, and 100 grams of oats. With you know, um, I think I was still doing my normal protein portions then, and then Friday we cut them in protein portions in half, and. Um, oh, Thursday night, we carved up with pancakes. 
because I look better the second day after a refeed. So we figured Thursday would be the best time to do that. Um, and I knew I didn't have the best conditioning. So I was like very adamant about being full. And Tim's like, dude, you're going to be fine. <laughs> but I was like, I want to be just like bursting full because I know I'm not going to out condition any of these top guys. So um, we definitely achieved that with the pancakes and then just normal the rest of the day. Friday, the 200 grams of rice, or I think we did 220. Um, and then Saturday morning was just uh, cream of rice, um, 100 grams of that, no protein. Um, and then I just had a couple of pancakes with peanut butter and honey before this stage. Um, kept water in, didn't do any anything like that. Uh, we did do half a diazide Friday night, but we didn't do any water loading or pulled it. Um, Friday morning, we just kind of were just sipping on it a little bit. Um, yeah, I think that covers most of that. Okay. What What did you weigh in at? Um, I weighed in at 245. Okay. Um, Friday morning, I was 247. And then that diazide had been working pretty good. And for finals that I came in, I was about 244. So I was a little bit tighter at finals. But I also had a shit ton of steps in. I had 7,500 steps on Saturday, which was way too many. But that's such a big venue. <laughs> and the Uber drivers kept dropping me off on the for, on the wrong side. And I was like too tired to even have them redo it. So I just walked over there. And um, yeah, next time definitely get somewhere a little closer. Yeah. You, you know what you should have done is should have, you should have had uh, uh Stu get like a moped or something and drive you around, man. What do you think about that? <laughs> yeah. I don't think that'll fit our early capacity on those. <laughs> <laughs> I could see, I could see both of you guys on a, on a little moped. Man. Oh, we cool. would, man. We definitely would. Oh yeah. That, that'd be, that'd Parents be right. Yeah. Okay. Now, okay. Now I, I, I want to, I want you to be real with me here because you said that, you knew that your conditioning wasn't going to be where you, where you wanted it. Right. So yeah, did that, did that, I'm, I'm assuming that probably messed with you a little bit mentally. So how did you kind of work through that? How did you kind of calm yourself? If you did like, just, just talk to us a little bit about that. And I, I want, I want you to talk about this because this is the reality for everybody that competes. Everything doesn't go as planned most of the time as, as a competitive bodybuilder. So how did you mentally deal with that if you did, Ryan? Yeah, um, honestly, man, it was pretty tough. I, I just kind of isolated myself from any and everything that was negative or um, wasn't in alignment with what I was trying to achieve. Um, I did, I was about two and a half weeks out, I think I sent... Stuart kept bothering me for photos so I'm like okay dude but please like take it easy on me I know this is not great or whatever and I sent him over and he was like yeah pretty close man yeah I don't know I was like damn bro like <laughs> and so I honestly I didn't talk to him till up till after the show because I was like dude you just I couldn't handle it and then even people coming up to me at the gym I had to just be direct and say I'm sorry I just do not want to make small talk today. And so I literally just had to block everything out and I went full tunnel vision, which is not always the best way to handle things. But for me, that's what I have to do. Uh, Cause otherwise I'm easily distracted and I'm, you know, I'll react to those, you know, anything that might trigger me in any type of way. So it's, it's really weird how much I have to isolate myself, but um yeah, I get home, I turn on meditation music and decompress. Like I have to have absolute peace and quiet. Um, and then I just go through my poses and like kind of, dude, I visualized that moment more than I could count. You know, like I go to bed and I'm going through my routine, like laying in bed over and over and over. Um, so I was like, you know, I just, I kind of had like this gut feeling that I was going to, I was going to get it even if I wasn't a hundred percent. It's kind of embarrassing. 
you know, some of the conditioning and my glutes weren't like popping like they should, but, um, you know, I'll get my chance to show everybody how good I can be this next time. hundred mm-hmm. percent, man. Okay. Walk us through pre-judging. Uh, were, did they, did they move you around uh, much? Did they keep you right by coal most of the time? How did that go? Yeah, there's pretty much put me in, uh, and um, Vincent or Vincenzo, whatever his name is. Yeah. Uh, they pretty much had us next to him the whole time. And I was like, okay, yeah. I, I was pretty confident. I was in second at that point to the point where somebody had told me, they're like, yeah, man, you look like top two or three. And I was like, no, I'm, I'm top two. <laughs> like, that's pretty damn sure. Uh, and I'm not a very confident person, but I just knew for whatever reason. Um, and I knew coming back at finals, I was even sharper or a little bit better. And um, it was only my fourth show, you know, it was my fourth time getting on the stage. So by the time I got to finals, I was like, I had this new confidence. When I did my finals routine, I was like, okay, I deserve this. Did they, uh, in pre-judging, did uh, they pose you for quite, quite, a, quite a long time, or was it shorter? It was much shorter than USA's when I did that the year before. I was 14 and a half minutes last year, because I was in first call-outs and second call-outs. They left me up there for both. Um, I didn't really get too sweaty this time. Even with how full I was, I don't think I really spilled. Um, yeah, it was good, man. Okay. So uh, what did you do in between pre-judging and finals? Did you just kind of hang out and chill and stay off your phone? Or did you check out your phone a little bit? Walk us through that for a quick minute. No, I, I stayed off my phone except talking to Tim. Um, I just went home, ate, put my feet up, watched a movie, and just tried to stay chill. And anytime I asked to pose or something, Tim's like, no, just go lay down. You're fine. <laughs> it's like, all right. I think that was really, really helpful having him there because he knows how much of an overthinker I am. And I'll, I will stay up and just go through my poses all night if I'm not told to just chill. Yeah. So that was really good. And even backstage, you know, I wasn't like anxious or anything. I just was laying down. Everything was great. Yeah. Mm. So my then tan, uh, my tan oh, go was ahead. super good. The, this was the best tan I've ever had too because she put three coats on like by hand and they sprayed three coats on me because I'm super pale and that looked really sharp. Um, there was this one issue that I had. Um, they glazed my legs a little too much. Um, so my hamstrings weren't popping on some of my side shots. So I just learned I have to not put too much glaze on my doctors to be able to cheat the ham a little bit. So. Um, didn't do that for finals and I, I got it to pop a little better. Hmm. Okay. So then, uh, walk us, walk us through finals. I mean, uh, and then, uh, talk a little bit about when you knew you had that pro card, when they announced you and, uh, what were your thoughts kind of in, in that moment, if you had any. That's the one that's, that's a tough one, honestly. Uh, I started to get, um, I think, I don't know, I just kind of like blacked out. <laughs> but then when I walked off stage, I was sort of in disbelief, I guess. Um, it just took me a minute to kind of like gather myself. You know, I felt like I was going to get emotional. But I kept it together and then said what's up to a couple of my friends back there. And then finally went out and saw my family and everything. And, um, kind of just shoved it all down for that moment because I did not want to feel all those feelings in front of everybody. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, then I had, I went for a walk the next day and kind of just like sat with it and let it soak in a little bit. Um, but it's, it's still going to take some time. I think training is when I notice it the most. Like I, I have this new like confidence when I'm training too. Um, that I just, like, I don't have to question it if I'm doing things the right way anymore. 
Um, I've only got a few days of training in before I got super sick, but I got a couple leg days, which is like, man, that was the best feeling being able to train legs. Um, had a little bit of energy in me from food and yeah, man, I'm just excited to get back to it and start growing. For sure, man. Now, uh, in terms of, uh, I guess what, what was your biggest, um, takeaway from this prep and, and, and the nationals experience outside of the, no pun intended, the, the hiccups or the, the speed bumps in the prep, uh, what, what, what was kind of your overall takeaway or some lessons that you learned, uh, from this prep and this experience specifically, Ryan? man there's so many <laughs> things i learned from this um man there was a lot of other stuff that i went through that wasn't even health related um like finance wise like my living situation and all that and i think the main thing that kept me going was like i have to make the people around me proud and if you know as long as i feel like i'm doing that it doesn't really matter um, like where I'm at, um, if I'm like in a high spot or a low spot, as long as I'm being like a good role model for my clients and my, my friends and family, that's what really kept me going is like, you know, everybody at O'Malley's, Tim and Julie, like they truly believed in me. And I was like, I just can't let these guys down. Um, so I guess I just learned that like, I don't know. Are you talking like technical things or like metaphorical? You, I, I just, <laughs> I, I, whatever, what whatever, I, however you like, want to take it, man. I, I just want to know what, what, what you learned. It can be whatever you want. You take it however you want. You can talk for the next fifteen minutes if you, if you learned a bunch of stuff. I don't care. This is, this is your, this is your time, man. This is about you, not, not anybody else, not about me. So I'm, try, I'm trying to keep it short and sweet, but. I'll take take um, make it long if you want. Unveiling man. as you have to be. <laughs> um, yeah, man. I think honestly, the thing is like, it is a selfish sport, but having a a community and a support system around you is so important. You know, and that might be them not even talking to you, but understanding that you need peace and quiet, but um, just being real with you and being there for when you do need them and um yeah so i just i couldn't be more grateful for everybody out here um and then there's a lot of technical things i learned too um and that's stay on top of your health um i should have got these things addressed before i was this deep into prep i think that could have saved me a lot of misery but by the time it was happening i was six and three weeks out i was like there's no way i can't keep running experiments with different medications and stuff that is close to the show i just have to just tough it out so i would say just make sure that you got a super good bill of health before you get into pushing it really hard for a show like this yeah. um yeah we'll give you that we'll stick with that for now <laughs> no that's good man love it um <laughs> Talk, talk a little Thank bit more you. about uh, your coach, Tim. Uh, I had him on the podcast. He seems like a very humble, mellow, uh, awesome dude. But, I mean, you touched on kind of the support system just, just a minute ago. But specifically, Tim, how, how much did he play a role in just helping you make it make it to, you know, the, the point where you're an IFBB pro? Yeah, man. <clears throat> I mean, we had all, all of last year to learn – you know, kind of what does and doesn't work for me. Um, we learned that we can keep me a lot fuller, different little things like that. Um, but I did kind of utilize him a lot more as like just keeping me focused. And, um, you know, um, he would keep it real with me if I was on or off point. And I think that was super important. I think we talked about that as like having that super open form of communication um, like when I was talking about moving to and from Arizona, um, I consulted with him first and made sure that he thought that that was 
doable and you know him even being there when I got back and letting me work at the front desk at the gym um, so I don't have to paint because that was a huge thing the whole reason why I moved to Arizona it was an opportunity to stop painting um, because he knows how hard that was on my body and you know because he was in a trade as well and um so it definitely helped not having to paint and he was a huge part of that letting me work at the gym at the front desk even though i was probably the worst employee that they've ever had <laughs> i'm surprised we didn't get a, a yelp complaint because i was very short with some of these people at, at one point in time but um i've never dealt with that many personalities coming in and out you know i've just been me and one other person or a couple of clients but you got over a hundred people coming through the door every day with smart ass things to say, like, <laughs> um, but yeah, so was, Tim and Julie, they, they both made sure that I had a, a good setup here to make sure that I could succeed and get at least through prep work in the front desk until my coaching picked up, which they also helped me get, you know, six clients the first month of about so. That's been super, super important. Very helpful. Yeah. All right. So <clears throat> why don't you talk a little bit? You made a post, I think, just earlier today about uh, a, a pro debut at the end of 2023. But before we get to that point, like walk us through. I know you're kind of getting over the sickness and stuff. Uh, it sounds like you got to kind of maybe go to the doctor, check check some things out. But What's kind of the plan going forward, going into 2023? Uh, just walk us through that for a little bit, uh, Ryan. Yeah. Um, like I said, I have that guest posing in July, which I want to be in decent shape for. So this this all works out great because it's, you know, I have to have a, a goal and like an end date. Otherwise, I'm, it's just too too in the air. I don't like that. I have to have, I start counting weeks down like, very very far out <laughs> because i'm super ocd like that um so that's in at the beginning of july so i figure that's a good time that i can i can grow up until then then i can kind of clean it up and run a little eight week mini prep just for that to see you know if these health things are cleared up if we can use different compounds again um test out different things without it being so much pressure. Um, then after that, I'll have a little while to reverse, grow again, and then start prep for something in you know October, November, around there. The only ones that are posted are really big shows, like uh, the Texas and the Legion, but I am definitely not at that caliber yet. So I will wait till they release some smaller ones. Um, I don't know. I hardly even know what all shows there is, but. Um, I'm keeping my eye out for the schedule. Hmm. Okay. Um, now, from your perspective, what's what area outside of just overall size, what body parts or what what area of your body are you going to really be focusing on going into the to the off season? Yeah, it's going to be legs and back again, just like last year. I feel like they're up to par now, but I want them to be like very dominant. Um, because I have longer legs. I'm five nine. I've got a little bit longer legs, so they could use a couple inches. And my upper body is pretty much there. It's just kind of fine tuning. My arms are definitely there. They're super full. Um, chest and shoulders are good. I just need my back and legs to, to blow up. Hmm. And I'm going to run the same split that I ran this last year because I love the way everything progressed. I might, you know, I'll adjust a couple exercises, but keeping the same split, pretty much the same training style I think I will throw a little bit more volume in on certain days than I was before um because I'm hitting some of the, those the upper end on some of these weights where I shouldn't be going up much heavier than like six plates on my deadlifts so we're just going to kind of stop it right there and just kind of just get as many reps with that as we can um yeah what 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 split uh, have you found that works best for you? Which one are you talking about? Just for people that didn't listen to previous episodes with you, Ryan. Yeah, so Monday I do chest and shoulders. 
I just smash them together because they're both very dominant. They don't need a whole lot of emphasis. Tuesday is back width, so mostly pull down stuff, a lot of isolation movements. Um, Wednesday is rest. Thursday is quads um, and calves. Friday's arms, just full arm day because I love it. Saturday is back thickness and hamstrings, so that's usually deadlifts and just a bunch of hamstring movements. And I'm actually going to start throwing in a touch of quads on those days too and adductors. Um, and then Sunday is a rest day. And I'm also going to be doing abs every other day because I feel like that's something that's going to help me with my posing and my um, midsection control. I've never really spent much time on them. And I think that'll also help um, just my balance and staying symmetrical. So I started working on those. I've been doing abs every other day when I have been training. And that's the plan for now. And then just kind of feed up on my leg days and keep everything else really clean the rest of the week. Awesome, man. Um, what, what, what is in your mind right now as a, a, a freshly crowned IFBB pro, like what's your expectation uh, at your pro debut and how far do you think you can take this, this pro bodybuilding thing? Um, I mean, I, at the moment, I feel like um, a reasonable expectation for myself would be first call outs at one of these lower tier pro shows. Um, I think that would be pretty great, especially that I've got some time to work into that. Um, what was the second part? Uh, the second part was how, how far do you think you can take this bodybuilding thing as a pro? Uh, that I don't know, but I do think I'm going to put an age cap on it. Um, cause I turned 30 in October and my goal was to, for the last couple of years, my goal has been to turn pro by the time I'm 30. And I was like, this is my last shot pretty much. So, um, I got that, and then I think, you know, six or seven years at the most, you know, competing. So however much I can move in the ranks in that time, and that's all also dependent on, you know, health markers and things like that. Um, I don't have the greatest blood work. <laughs> I don't have a great history of really stellar blood work. So um, it's going to take some time getting that figured out. I was not very great about checking it when I was younger didn't really realize so I'm really on top of it now um, doing all the recovery type treatments and stuff like that and doing different glutathiones and shit so um, yeah as long as I can stay healthy enough I'm hoping I can be just see how far I can take it by the time I'm like 36 37 okay cool man get out early so I don't you know have a terrible life as an old guy just doing masters bodybuilding shows at these local <laughs> spots <laughs> no you know uh respect <laughs> respect to those guys but sometimes i think they just gotta i, I think they're a little delusional don't you they, you, you gotta, yeah, you gotta just go know when to call time. it quits right go out when you're on top is what i'm thinking <laughs> yeah it's just sad but yeah man yeah Okay, we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up here in a quick minute, but I want to ask you. Uh, I, I I know it's been kind of a whirlwind since you got your pro card, but did anybody uh, reach out to you through Instagram, or did you uh, have anybody congratulate you at nationals, Ryan? That you know, kind of kind of was cool, or kind of caught you off guard. A anybody that we we kind of think was kind of neat that uh, congratulated you as a as a new pro. Um, <clears throat> right when I got off stage, I saw Martin Fitzwater. And I, I've really looked up to him, even though he's younger than me. But since I saw him in 2019 at North Americans, I was like, damn, this kid's really good. He's going to turn pro. And he didn't turn pro then. I think it was the next show or whatever he did. But I met him, and he was super cool. And he, he like, welcomed me to the league and everything. And, you know, that was crazy. Uh, I got to meet Nate Spear, who I've – he's been really, like, supportive and, you know, I've – shot the shit with him a few times on Instagram before and followed his journey. I know he fought super hard to get his pro card and 
So it was cool meeting those two guys and uh, yeah, just kind of bullshitting with them and a couple of the judges and, um, but yeah, other than that, nothing too crazy yet. You know, it's been pretty quiet, <laughs> which is totally fine with me. You know, I've kind of been hiding because I've been sick and, you know, it kind of sucks. I haven't had like these really great progress photos to post, but I figured I have to stay relevant. So I posted those from a couple of days ago before I got the flu, but I, uh, yeah, I couldn't even keep crackers and water down yesterday. So, but a couple of weeks I'll be back. I'll be posted more regularly again. Okay. Are you, are you, are you and Stu back on good terms now or what? Yeah. Okay. yeah well, he stayed, stayed at our same Airbnb. Okay. So uh, we were all good. I think he got in Friday night and he was, we were shooting the shit. And I actually got to talk to him after the show, just me and him for a while, just chilling out on the deck until like three in the morning, just having a, you know, a life talk bro moment. He knew that I was just going through it. He's like, honestly, you're my friend. That's why I told you that I didn't know if you were ready or not. Like, and and honestly, hearing him say that made me push even harder because I was I was like, man, fuck this guy. <laughs> well, if it if it makes you feel any better, I uh, sent him a DM. Uh, I don't know a few days out from nationals. I said, do you think uh, Ryan Ryan's gonna take the overall? And and he just sent back. He sent a DM back to me just saying he's my pick. So it, maybe maybe to your face, he he was giving you a little a little. Uh, uh, you know, jab, but uh, I'm, I'm pretty confident that he was very confident in you and he is confident in you going forward. So I think that's, that's pretty cool to have somebody, you know, that you're good friends with that's already a pro. And I think you guys will be battling out on a pro stage at some point, which will be, will be really fun. So. Yeah. I'm super excited, man. Yeah, for sure. All right, Ryan. Uh, I guess the last question I want to ask you, anybody that's going to be watching this or listening to this, uh, Maybe they're kind of uh, at that point where they're they 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 want to go after that pro card. Maybe they're you know been competing at Nash at the national level for quite a few years, and uh, you know they're just they're just on that grind like you and like everybody else, like Nate Spear. Um, what 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 words of encouragement? What words of wisdom can you kind of share with that person or those people just to kind of like say, hey, you know, just keep keep pressing on. Man, you just got to be relentless, like like you have to have this um this extreme level of focus that nothing can distract you um honestly like i said it's just keeping that peace in your life and quiet and staying 100 percent focused on that one goal and you know if you have so much energy you're not going to have balance in your life if all your energy is going to one sub one one area of your life or the other so um, you do have to be ready to make those sacrifices and um, but with greater sacrifices come greater rewards usually and uh, pretty pretty often the the more you sacrifice the closer you get to your ultimate goal um it might not seem like it in the moment, but it all comes around full circle. Cool, man. Well, that's a that's a that's a cap. That's a wrap on uh, nationals. So uh, again, Ryan, man, I just want to say thank you so much for coming on. This is the third time I got a hold of you way back, and I don't know it was March or April or something. You were still painting, yeah, it, and it here like we April. are. Uh, here we are. You're you're an IFBB pro, man. So I just want to say congratulations. Thank you for coming on. We'll we'll keep in touch. We'll get you back on at some point and catch up again, okay? Dude, thank you so much for having me on these last few times. It's been super cool and really encouraging for me to even feel like I'm, you know, worthy of being on something that should be shared. So thank you very much again. I just want to let you know. Um, I love listening to these and hearing everybody's backstory. So keep doing what you're doing, man. It's awesome. Cool. Yep, for sure. You're welcome. Give us your Instagram before I do a quick outro here, Ryan. So it's just Ryan Foster and six, seven. Okay, perfect. All right. All of you who are tuning in this episode of behind the muscle podcast, I just want to say thank you so very much. 
Uh, if you guys have not done so already, please hit that subscribe button in regards to Behind the Muscle podcast on YouTube. Also, please take this episode with Ryan, share it on your Instagram stories. Make sure you tag Ryan, uh, tag Behind the Muscle podcast so that we know you listen specifically to this episode and found great value in it, in which I know you did. And then finally, I will leave you all with this. Remember, behind the muscle, there's always a story. We'll catch you guys later.